So I want to show you how to run the files for homework where you're going to calculate the flow nets using GMS. What I did was to download the compressed file that's stored in Blackboard and I extracted it just basically by clicking on the file then I extracted it and put the files in this folder and these are the files that you should have. These are the GMS files and these are image files that will serve as the base map for the, uh, the FlowNet models. You can see, for example, the dam problem is shown here. That's what this file looks like. OK, so we're going to run these on GMS uh, version 5 point, or 9.1. And that's the most recent version. And so it, it would be optimal if you could run them on that particular version. They may run on some of the earlier versions, 8.3, but there may be some problems if you try to run them on versions of GMS that are earlier than that. So to open it, I go to File, Open, and then navigate to the folder that I created. Or in this case, it'll be the folder that you created. Uh, open it, and let's do FlowNet1 first. So when I open it, I get this. Um, this is what the file looks like, and I can turn off. They're basically these three main uh, components, the grid data, the map data, and the GIS layers. So if I turn off the first two, then this is just the base map, the underlying base map. And if I, under, if I expand this, I see that there are two files here this particular example problem only uses this one called FlowNet1 PNG and I can turn it off here. So we turn it on and here's the, um, the boundary conditions. These will be constant head boundaries and these are no flow boundaries. And right now it's just a picture but I used this picture to set the problem up. So if we turn these back on uh, we have the grid data is on and so the first thing that we'll do to run this problem uh, is to expand the grid data out and we see grid here. We can expand that out and there are various entries but we're going to select grid and right click and then go to new mod flow and this now is the start of a mod flow model. What we do first is to go over here to this menu, go to starting heads, and the default will be a starting head of zero, but we want to have a starting head of one. So we enter that with constant grid, and then we select OK. We should check bottom elevation, and it's um, below zero, so that's good. That's what we need for this problem. And that should be good. So we select OK. Now while we're here setting up ModFlow, we should go to the LPF node, right click, Properties, and then right here, change the layer type from Convertible to Confined. And actually while we're here, let's check Horizontal Hydraulic Conductivity. And it's zero, so that's a problem. We need to reset that to, um, we'll just use a conductivity of one for these, this problem. Hit OK. Horizontal anisotropy, we can just leave that alone for now. One is fine. So it's isotropic. And we hit OK. So we've just made these two changes in the LPF node. OK, so that's all we need to do to set the mod flow model up for this simple problem. Now what we should do is um, we'll try mapping the, um, the setup here into a mod flow file. And check OK. So that worked. And you can see these uh, diamonds here. Those are boundary conditions. We should also go to check simulation and run check. We probably should have done this first, but um, 
this will take a look at the files that we have and see if there are any problems. And so there are different ModFlow packages. It takes a look at them and we see that there are no warnings or errors detected. So that's good. That's something that is helpful to do to check for errors, although it's not required. So we've checked for errors, we've mapped this data into a modflow file. So now we've created the modflow file and we need to run it. So this button here will run it. We press that. And now we're asked whether we want to save the changes that we made. Well, we do, but I want to save them to a new file. So I'm going to hit cancel. And before I run this, I'm going to go over here to File and uh, go to Save As. And what I did was to set up another folder that I call Test Cases. And this one has, it's got the flow nets in it that I ran previously. And I'm going to save it. What's going to happen when you run the GMS file is that you will make a variety of other files. In fact, you'll make many files. And so you want to put the, um, you want to save the file, the, the, the root file, in a folder that um, is dedicated to this model or at least is a special folder with only a few models in it because you want to be able to keep these um, files straight. If you just do this, uh, if you if you work and save all of your files say to your desktop very quickly your desktop will become uh, quite cluttered so what I did was to save this to a separate folder so I have the original files that I downloaded and then I'm gonna write over top or then I'm gonna save a new file um, with basically the same name but in a different folder and so I'm gonna preserve the files that I downloaded and I'm not going to overwrite them. So now I can run this and what I'm looking for here is this green line and we see I only have one iteration that's okay. Um, this is the number of iterations as a function of the error and the error is small enough so that the solution has converged and we have a result. I also look down here and I see ModFlow 2000 terminated successfully. So that's good news. I hit close and then this is the contour of the hydraulic heads. The high head here, head of one, and then head of zero here. Okay so that's the the, the analysis of the hydraulic heads. We can modify what the display looks like um, there are many settings here, but I'll first go to the 3D grid and we see the contour maps or we see on right here this is a, a contour map and so we can modify what it looks like. Let's just look here. We, are, we had a color uh, fill and linear. Let's just go with linear. And so we see what we get in that case is just contour lines here. So there are many options and I would recommend that you just take a look at these options and experiment around with uh, what you can do to change the look of the, the map. One thing that you might want to do is include labels. So you can do that if you go here. This is just automatic label. This is a label on your contours. So now the contours have these labels written on them. And another possibility would be, let's turn that off. Um, another thing you might want to do is set the transparency and make the, the um, colors here transparent. Now we don't have really much underneath this, but we could. We could have a whole base map and by making it semi-transparent, you can see things underneath it um, better. So 
that'll allow you to layer information on top of itself and uh, see various uh, things have, have one layer show through another layer okay so go and experiment around um, with that and um, let's go and move on and put in some flow lines so what we need to do is to select right here the the map um, toolbar and by pressing that selection we get this toolbar and we want to put in some starting points for flow lines and so we select there create point and I'll just go in and put these points in like so and we could put them in evenly spaced perhaps or we could put in more closely spaced these will be the starting points for the streamline so we put them in however we feel we should have them in and there they are so now what we need to do to turn them into streamlines is to go here to select objects and then we'll make a box and select all of these points so they change slightly they become gray when they're selected and then we right click here and go to select intersecting objects left click that and then this is the only possibility a 3d grid cell hit OK and then go to mod pass and go to generate particles at selected cells and you'll just accept the default here and there are the streamlines and you can check this now by looking at the ratio of uh, the spacing to the, uh, the spacing between the streamlines and the spacing between the equal potentials and you can see as you follow this stream tube along they stay about constant here we have a much different ratio but as it as you follow it along you can see that ratio stays constant so this is obeying the laws or the rules for a flow net now we might also want to copy this and paste it in a document so we can go here to screen capture this is the easiest way select OK and then I have a Word document here that's open and I can paste this in the Word document so there's the image um, with this uh, legend and what I would recommend doing is typing in uh, what is shown here this is in Word, so you can type in whatever you want. And this is the name of the file. And we might also uh, write a description uh, analysis done by L. Murdoch uh, on 1 October 2013. Okay. So there we have it. That's how you analyze the FlowNet problem. And there are several other files in here for you to work with, uh, but they all should be done more or less the same way. Good luck.